Friends, I thought I would be done sooner, but it took me a while putting together this monster. And I will tell you what it's for, how much it costs, more or less. And here is what it can do. Hello everyone, you are at the WNDM channel. Here is what this machine looked like when I received it from the USA. It turned out to be pretty hard to get it here, but it's all done now. Essentially, this is a foundation for Ether or Lath or a Milan machine. In the first case, it would be what I've got here. We just add a headstock. In the second case, we would need to add a vertical column with a Z-axis. We will also need to create a spindle drive mount and connect the steeper motors to the X and Z-axis. Here we already have these weird couplings, which should come with plastic bushings, but there isn't any here, so we will make them out of brass. The headstock comes off here. I'm using the one with ER16 colored chuck, but maybe someday I'll save up enough cash for this one for the 5C collets. It has a very large opening, but it costs as much as a half of this machine. For now, let's me allow the mounts to attach the spindle drive. We make a longitudinal hole for mounting the motor. This way we will be able to regulate the bell tension. There is a ready-made mount like this, but it is made for completely different engines. So we will make our own version for attaching the 4 watt Yaskawa servo. There are already holes and screws in the body of the machine, which makes our task a little easier. I used the 5 amp belt with a 1 to 1 sheave. These screws here can be used to adjust the tension. We will make 8 bushings for the couplings of the X and Z axis from a brass rod, 4 mm in diameter. Here it is crucial to cut out the exact size, otherwise each of the axes will have a bit of a backlash. It will appear over time anyway, of course, but it won't be a problem to make new ones. It's a bit strange that they slide into half of the holes of the coupling easier than into the other holes. However, there is no backlash and that is good. It's a bit tight for now, but I've done it on purpose. Over time it will rub itself into place and fit perfectly. The engine mount itself is also quite unique. It's this cut tube with a flange. We put the clamp on it and tighten it. The engine itself is attached to that. At first, this kind of a setup did not really inspire any confidence, but when I tightened everything up, it turned out to be a fairly sturdy contraption. Ok, so this was the cross light, now we need to do the same with the longitudinal one. This kind of a machine setup normally doesn't include the tailstock, but I figured out a way to have it here anyway. I already had a head wheel from a previous machine. We will install it and see how everything moves. My machine has a ball screw feed, so the longitudinal feed works when you spin the handle to the left. This is a bit unusual, but the software does not care at all. But, as opposed to lead screw feed, there is no backlash. We will put all the electronics into this electronics box, and Arduino Mega 2560 will control it. I won't show you the whole process, as it's pretty boring. I will, however, show you a few moments. With the step drill, I made five holes on the side panel. Here we will have some of the engines and the controls. I also cut out small spacers, so that Arduino doesn't touch the case with its back side. In the end, I'll show you the whole box. For now we need to configure the precise axis moments. I have this digital indicator by me to Toyo. It's accurate down to microns. We will try to use it to get precise motion. There is no problem with the longitudinal and cross feet. However, the spindle and its rotations are a bit more complicated. There is really no issue with the spinning mode. It's an analog mode, so I just apply the voltage and it just spins. But it uses a digital mode for thread cutting. And here the engine needs to get back to the same exact point where it started. Anyway, I configured the number of steps per rotation and got a good result. We are not building a traditional lathe here, because Arduino allows us to connect up to 5 stepper motors. Here we will have another axis for vertical and horizontal milling. The fifth and final engine will be moving the fork, which pulls back the spring-loaded collet nut and releases the part. Now we need to make one more handwheel. 
Once again, our workpiece is 50mm and doesn't fit in terms of height. Actually, the cutter has enough of an overhang, but let's try something for the future. I have this spacer that I look from a milling machine, and it's a perfect fit for the headstock. This kind of setup has its advantages and disadvantages. As an advantage, you will be able to hold a part with a much larger diameter. As a disadvantage, you will also need spacers for the tool holder and for the tailstock. Although this is a CNC machine, sometimes it's easier to manually bring the cutters to the beginning of the workpiece. I don't have spacers for the tailstock, so I decided to clamp the drill in a tool holder. Our shaft diameter is 8 mm, so we will cut out a proper inner diameter for it in the hand wheel. As expected, the biggest issue turned out to be cutting the part off from the workpiece. I didn't make the spacer for the tailstock. I gave up and put the headstock back. But just in case, I have the opportunity. The only thing is that I would need three spacers. Then we move on to the Milan machine. Get centered and drill a hole for the handle. And one more hole for the set screw to fix the hand wheel on the axis. Now let's cut a thread into it. We make the base of the handle a little bigger in diameter than the hole, so that we can press it against the hand wheel. I've only shown you a small part of the work, even though I bought the base of the machine, all the improvements always take a while. And that's not all, I'm still waiting for the package with the driver for the B axis and some ER16 nuts to make other improvements, and a few other small things as well. When I'm done, the machine should be fully automatic, meaning that we'll be able to program it for the desired number of parts, and it will keep making them until the road runs out. All that theoretical, we'll see if it works or not. In the meantime, we press the handle in and insert the hand wheel into its space. The shaft is a bit short, but there is enough for it to hold on to. I've prepared a small program for turning and threading. I temporarily fixed the chisel on the opposite side instead of a milling attachment. Turning and threading will all be done with one cutter. The program is not optimized yet, the setting can be much higher, especially since it's non ferrous metal. It's just it's the first serious test, and the most important thing now is to get the result. The spindle is now turning in an analog mode, so what we are seeing is regular turning. After the finishing pass, it switches to the digital mode. The precision of the turn is taken into account. In this mode it cuts the thread. The software is free, and with it two separate engines are supposed to be responsible for creating the shape and cutting the thread. But with the Yaskava server I managed to combine these modes, and now one engine does both. And the last stage, cutting the part off. It turned out to be a quite simple, but interesting processing. With the addition of a Milan attachment, everything can get much more complex. Here is what the ball screw looks like. It's a good thing that it's completely protected from the shavings. It is a friction guide, but it boasts a pretty long service life with proper lubrication, of course. Even though the spindle bore is small, only 10 mm, for now it will be totally enough for everything I need. The biggest advantage here is a very long cross fit. You can fix many cutters on there, therefore reducing the change in time. The electronic part looks like this. I am by no means an expert on writing, but the most important thing is that it works. Arduino controls all of this. A big plus is that compared to the series controllers, it doesn't cost that much. Here on the video, the A axis is not hooked up yet, but I have connected it by now and somewhere in root are the drivers for the B-axis. The machine turned out to be small but very functional. Now I need to wield a table for it. I promised to tell you how much it came out to be in terms of price. It's hard to say exactly, because I bought the base a year ago. 
but as of right now it costs me around 160,000 rubles. Generally, you could rebuild any machine tool in the same way, even a cheaper one. If the crossfit is too short, you could add an automatic tool changer. Other issues can be resolved as well. Overall, the machine works, and that is great. We will keep improving it. Bye-bye.